please help me give a very warm welcome to a PLU alum, Erica Matova. <laughs> all the way around. <clears throat> well, Erica, how are we doing today? I'm doing really well, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and uh, so you just got, you did just finish a tour today, is that true? No, I have a week left of the tour. Um, I'm doing a educational tour with the Fifth Avenue Theater. It's a musical about Rosie the Riveter. Um, and this is our 14th week, and the 15th week next week will be our last. Wow, where can we go see you? Is it nearby or is it? Uh, we perform at a lot of schools. Uh, we performed at a couple museums around the area, but this next week we'll just be in a lot of like elementary schools, middle schools in Seattle. So fun, fun. So yeah. just a lot, of, a lot of the kiddos. It has, yeah, are you, yeah, cute. Are you kiddos. with the kiddos? Or are you like? I don't. I'm not with the kiddos. I like to be oh, away from oh. the kiddos. <laughs> no, I love them. They're so cute. I mean, we'll perform for like 300 kindergartners, and there's oh. there's like a line in the show where I accidentally call one of the characters. Mr. Booger. His name is Mr. Beagle Bauer, and I say, oh, Mr. Big Old Booger. And um, <laughs> to hear like 300 chubby little round faced kindergartners just laughing so loud is the best thing ever. It's so fun. I love it. And you know, one of them was like, yeah, Booger, yeah, I've got those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can't, you can't reel them back in. <laughs> like, that's the, that's the end for them. So I saw this on your Instagram and things. The New York trip, tell me about it. What was that like? I mean, because that's the dream of yours, is to go out there and you got to go and be a part of some theater, right? Yeah, yeah, so um, I've never been to New York, actually, which is crazy. I feel like I had when I got off the plane. I thought that I was just on vacation my whole life and I was just coming home to New York. Um, but yeah, I got asked to do a reading of a show I kind of mentioned to you before called Nihon Jean Face. Um, it's a show that I did last year. I toured around for a little bit in Tacoma um, and they were uh, reviving it on the East Coast and they wanted to kind of see the reception that New York might have for it. So um, they flew me out. It was a really quick trip for four days. I wish I could stay longer, but I saw a ton of theater. I roamed a lot. I went to a lot of museums. It was really, really fun, yeah. What was your favorite New York food? Did you get to the, uh, the cookie dough that you just eat like ice cream? I didn't get to that, but my favorite New York food was actually I got off my six-hour flight and all I had time to do was run to my Airbnb, drop my bags off, and then go to a show. Um, and that was my first Broadway show. And I went to the Iceman Cometh and Denzel Washington was in it. Um, and it was fantastic, of course, but I didn't realize it was four hours long. <laughs> <laughs> and there were three intermissions, but they didn't have food there. They just had candy, but uh, one candy bar was like $14. So I wasn't going to do that. So I hadn't eaten anything for so long that when I got out of this like really bougie, fancy Broadway show with like Denzel Washington. I just went straight for a hot dog cart and I got a $5 New York hot dog cart hot dog and it was the it was the best food that I had the whole time there. Yeah. Just like a whole experience come true. I feel like you have it to was. do the New York dog when you're, when you're out there. I, I'm not from there so I don't know what you have to do but... <laughs> It was definitely like a life-changing experience. The hot dog, yeah. Right, the hot dog, yeah. Yeah, in Minnesota, the one thing you have to do is just stay warm. That's the only... <laughs> uh, so you've played Little Red, Rosie the Riveter, and all these roles. What, what has been your favorite role that you've done? I mean, you've done things throughout your whole life. Do you have one that stands out to you that really uh, you feel extra passionate about? Oh my gosh, that's really hard. I mean, the cheesy answer is that I love all of them and they're all really important to me and I get so sentimental every time a show closes. But I think my favorite so far has to be uh, Little Red and Into the Woods at the Village Theater because that was my like, professional debut. Uh, that was something that I've been working my whole life for. And so to like debut on a stage that I had gone to see shows and been like, I don't know if I can ever do that or I don't know if that's something tangible to me for me to be on that stage opening night, like that was just, that was the greatest thing. So that, that's like one of the most important ones I've done. Yeah. What was that like? Um, like your first show, your professional debut, just uh, being on stage for the first time, what was, what, what was that like? It was really surreal. I actually remember seeing a show there years ago at the Village Theater and I, they were so fantastic that I was like, there's no possible way that I could get to that level. They're just, they're just amazing. And then to be in a show where I had a pretty large part was just beyond my wildest dreams and then surrounded by a lot of people who've been in the business for so long. They were all so supportive. Um, and right before we went out, I was just kind of standing there in shock, like, 
this is it. This is what I've been waiting for my whole life. And it's here, I'm here. And I was just trying to absorb as much as I could while also like trying to stay in the show. And, um, but it was, it was just hands down like one of the best days of my life. Uh, and I think, I think when Erica was at PLU just last year, and I think pretty much everybody here knew that you were going to do great things. So we're glad that you're, you're, you're already out there doing cool things. And there's even more in the works. Uh, you're writing a, a play. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, so I, I hadn't really done a lot in playwriting, but um, since being in Seattle and working with a ton of people, uh, they're all just really multifaceted artists. And so they... Um, all compose, or they playwright, or they're dramaturgs, or they're directors, um, and so they have a lot of different avenues for their art. Um, and so it really inspired me to um, write something of my own. I'm really inspired by uh, queer women of color in the theater. I think uh, they deserve more representation, and I uh, a big part of my artistic statement is to um, elevate those stories and to tell those stories that aren't being told. And so, uh, yeah, I was inspired to write a show. Um, and it centers around five uh, queer women of color, and they're all Girl Scouts. Um, and they may or may not, at some point in the show, become killer Girl Scouts. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine all the ways that story's gonna come together. Like, what happened to these girls that... I don't know. Um, I don't even know yet, so <laughs> I will let you know <laughs> when that happens. Uh, we look forward to uh, hearing more about that as, as it comes a about. Um, could you, so is your playwriting doing these things, is acting still kind of your, like, that's, that's what you want to do, that's your, uh, your true passion is acting, or what do you think as far as your future in the theater goes? Yeah, so um, I think the exciting thing about theater is that I don't know where it's going, I don't know what's coming next. Um, what's kind of crazy about being a performer is that you're constantly auditioning for your next job, um, so you're just always on that grind. Um, but yeah, I, I had thought of myself as strictly a performer, strictly an actor, singer, dancer. Um, and then I met so many people who just did it all. They had, they had so many ways of expressing themselves artistically. And so I don't really know what's going to be next for me in the cards, but I could see myself directing or um, like doing research, helping with playwriting, composing. Um, I just think it's really exciting. I'm, I'm realizing that there's not one a strict way to express myself, that there's so many more options that I, I didn't realize a while ago, yeah. That's really cool. And you mentioned the, the auditioning process. Uh, I mean, a lot of people, when they go for a job, they interview and either they get the job or they don't, but you, even when you get a job, you know that you're gonna have another interview later on, another interview later on, another yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is that like, just like knowing that for a while, you're not gonna have like uh, one job. You're just gonna be interviewing, 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 and being evaluated. Yeah, um, so first of all, you need to get a really thick skin because they're always gonna tell you no. You're gonna go out for so many projects and they're gonna say no. Um, and then there'll be one yes that um, gets you a job for a few months and then a million more auditions. Um, but I think something that I've really come to realize is that who you are as an artist doesn't depend on whether you're cast in a show or not. There, there are a million roles that uh, you might be a fantastic actor or performer, but you're just not right for. You know, like mm -hmm. there are roles that just don't require a short Asian girl, right? If you're, if you're telling like Hairspray is that village right now, and it's just not. I'm not going to be in that show, but that doesn't make me like a bad actress. And I think that that separation of not having that be your like reasoning to do theater, but like expressing yourself is the reason that you do theater. So whether the jobs are there or not, um, you're still an artist. Yeah, that's super cool. I think, and I think that's true of like every profession. You know, whatever you're doing, even if you're not currently doing it, you can still identify you know, as, that, as that profession, which, okay. is, which is really cool. Um, one last question for you. Um, do you have any advice for people? I mean, you've been giving a lot of advice. Uh, do you have any like words of wisdom for PLU students as they go out in the world? I um, mean, we're a smaller university, and a lot of people will be like, oh, "You went to a liberal arts school." <laughs> like, what do you What do you have to say to the people who are in audience tonight? Um. Hmm. Well, I I actually came to PLU thinking I was going to be a business major uh, my first year. <laughs> in a lot of us. In a lot of us. Because <laughs> um, I I I knew that I wanted to do theater, but I. I didn't know at the same time. Um, I just, it was so scary to think of committing your life to something that could potentially be unstable the rest of your life. Um, and my parents were kind of on the fence about it, so I came and I was like, you know, I could probably be really successful in the business, like, I, I could do well 
in in that area. And so I decided to pursue that. I mean, I was just so miserable. I was really miserable. I thought about dropping out, or I thought about transferring, and then. I took an acting class. I decided on a whim to transfer into an acting class here. And my first day, I just realized that I, I had been lying to myself. And um, I, so it was that day I just changed my major in the middle of my first year. And I decided I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it 100%. And so I decided to relentlessly pursue what I was passionate about, and then that's when I found success. So I, I feel like if you're unsure of what you want to do, you just need to find out. Vocation. Vocation! <laughs> you know, that's it. Yeah, I just like, if you find what makes you go and what makes you feel like you're human, like you, you, you're meant to be in that area, then you just have to do it. It's gonna be scary and it's gonna be, it's gonna be really, really scary, but I think that if you do that, if you pursue what you're passionate about, there's no way you can't be successful. Wow. Thank you so much. Erica's gonna come back for our game later, but give it up for her. We'll be right back with more from